Hi, I'm Aaron Woland. I'm a principal engineer in Cisco's Advanced Threat Security Team. I'm here to show you an example of the types of tools that you can create using our open APIs in our security products to provide the types of automated behavior that you may be looking for. Specifically, I'm going to show you an example Python script that uses REST APIs that are available in the Advanced Malware Protection product, also known as AMP and the Identity Services Engine, also known as ICE, to take automated actions within ICE and AMP whenever a malware event is seen. So with the script that we're going to use, it's going to identify computers within AMP that have experienced certain events. Those events that we're going to look for are threat quarantined and threat detected. Now, you could theoretically use any events available in AMP and when you build your own scripts, but for the purposes of this explanation, these two events are going to work perfectly. When these events fire, we want to move them into new groups within AMP. That's one of the actions we're going to take. When a threat has been quarantined, right? we are going to move that into a new group within AMP called ATW Isolated in this example. And it's a new group has a different policy that will then be applied to that endpoint to try and isolate it as much as we can. Um, at the same time, we are going to apply a label or what ICE might call an ANC policy to the device within ICE called ANC kick from network. So those computers that have experienced threat quarantine will be moved to a new group within AMP and this label will be applied so that ICE can now take a different action on that endpoint, such as removing it from the network. For endpoints that have had threat detected that were not included in that threat quarantined group, right? we're gonna move them into a group inside of AMP called ATW Triage, so that an incident responder can investigate those further, as well as apply a label in ICE that called ANC Investigate, so that it can trigger other behaviors within the network, such as changing the path through the environment, such as uh, inspecting SSL now, um, so that we take a much more interested look at those computers and not just kick them off the network. Uh, we want to examine further what they're doing. Right? So ultimately, this is what the script is going to be doing and, and kind of how the setup is here. So on the left hand side we have ICE, on the right hand side we have AMP, and sitting in the middle we have a Linux server that is running Python <clears throat> to run this script. So the first portion of the script is what I call the setup portion. And what happens here first is the script reaches out to the AMP console and it grabs the event IDs for the string threat quarantined and the string threat detected. So it grabs those and stores them down on the Linux server for use later on in the script. It's also going to go grab the, the unique identifiers, the GUIDs, for the groups that we're focused on. And in this script, we're focused on three groups. ATW Production, ATW Triage, and ATW Isolate. Those are the three groups. We're going to reach out and grab those group IDs for all three groups. We need these IDs for use within our actual commands that we're going to use within the script. So we must have those first. So the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to query AMP for the computers that are in that group. Right? The group is going to be ATW Production. That's the source group of the script. And we're going to query it for a list of computers that have had the threat quarantined event ID show up. And we're going to receive that information in a JSON file. And we're going to hold on to this information um, for us to use again further in the script. The next thing we need is the MAC addresses of each of those computers. And we're going to request every MAC address of every interface of that computer that AMP knows about in the AMP cloud so that we can use it when we go to assign that ANC label within ICE. So. Now that we have all that information, we can assign that MAC address or that series of MAC addresses for each computer. 
right, to that label ANC kick from network, and then move the computer into ATW isolate group on the amp side, and then move on to the next computer in our array. Okay, now in the threat detected portion, so that was the threat quarantine. Threat detected is going to work in exactly the same way. Query for the computers in that production group that have had the threat detected event ID. Right, hold on to that list of computers so we can iterate through it. Right, grab the MAC addresses of each one of those computers for every interface as we iterate through it. Assign them to the ANC investigate label in ICE, and then move the computer into the ATW triage group in AMP. Now let's go see this script in action. You can find our APIs in a nice short URL, cs.co slash ATS for advanced threat security dash APIs. And that will bring you over to our GitHub uh, where we have these published. Now from there, um, this will be under AMP for endpoints. And within that, you'll see it right here is LOX AMP ICE RTC. And this has a nice description of all the different files, what they do, samples, and how to execute. Um, so you will see all of that. What you will end up with are files like these down here. All right. So if you download everything from the GitHub, you'll have all these different files. The one you're going to end up running mostly is RTC amp ice.py. Um, the other files are there for setup and things of that nature, such as the parameters.json is where you're going to define uh, all your specific organization information instead of mine. Okay, um, the art, the actual script that's going to execute looks like this, and it's sort of set up in that same order that I was describing to to you earlier. We have the setup section, then we're going to get the event IDs from AMP. Then we're going to get the group GUIDs from AMP. And then we're going to get all threat quarantine events for those defined groups. Then we're going to show you which computers had those events. And we're going to grab all of their MAC addresses. And then we are going to assign them to the correct label within ICE for ANC. Then we're going to repeat that entire behavior for the threat detected since we just did it for threat quarantine. Focusing on a window where we're going to make this happen. Um, if we take a look inside of ICE, let's start at ICE. Inside of operations, and then we have adaptive network control. And then we have our policy list, which is what you see here. These are the ANC policies, as they're called in the ICE user interface. Uh, if you've ever heard me speak about this topic, you know, you'll know that this is more of a label than it is a policy nothing happens unless we even after we assign it to these labels nothing happens until we apply it into our policies themselves but these are our policies these are any endpoints that have been assigned to those policies which we'll go ahead and clear all of these out okay so we have no endpoints assigned right now we have these policies Okay, we should be starting from a, a clean slate. On the AMP side, we've got mostly every computer is going to be within a single group. And that group is going to be called ATW Production for the purposes of this demo. Um, so we'll see why I've got a machine and audit. But most of these machines, they're all in ATW Production. Now we have what's called demo data loaded up into the system. So these aren't real malware events. These aren't even real computers. These are um, just 22 things that require our attention. Uh, the demo data can always be loaded under accounts. Demo data, if you wanna try this type of thing in your own environment in a test method. So all the machines are currently in that group, ATW production. As we scroll down here, you'll also notice that the ATW isolated and ATW triage groups exist and they can each have their own policies that will be assigned. Now for the fun. Now we're gonna focus in on the actual script itself. 
And we can actually run this. Okay. We can actually run this here. So Python RTC amp ice.py. Now this is also going to be my, uh, writing to a debug file because I do have it in debug mode. So if we do get any errors or anything, we have a debug file that we can go back in and examine to make sure that uh, things, if things did not work, where that failure occurred. Um, so far we do not have an error that is a positive thing. So it's been reaching out, it's going up to, um, reaching out, it's going up to the AMP cloud, grabbing the group IDs, grabbing the event IDs, looking inside of the group, Right. and doing everything that we described a few minutes ago and it completed and it completed successfully. Um, so you see here where it says, thank you for using mine and Neil's script. Okay, so did it work? What happened? Well, let's go look at our endpoint assignments and there we go. All right, we've had a bunch of machines assigned to ANC investigate and we've had this one at least assigned to ANC kick from network did it work over on the amp side of the house. So on the amp side of the house now where everything was in ATW production, right? Now there's appears to only be six direct members, whereas ATW isolate has got the one member and ATW triage has the 18 direct members. So we were successful in performing our rapid threat containment with ICE using ANC, moving devices into a specialized group inside of AMP so we can now go triage them even further. Right. And we are good to go. Thank you for your time.